everybody. Happy Sunday morning. It's Meredith. I'm out in my backyard walking my dog. We just got a new puppy. She's awesome. She needs lots of love and attention. Just like my daughter, Alex. Just like your kid too, if you have kids. So I'm working on a video today on why there are so few women pilots. And the answer, you might not like, especially if you are a woman thinking about becoming a pilot or if you are a pilot. So buckle up, here we go. First, let's begin with some facts and figures. According to the FAA pilot database, at the end of 2023, there were approximately 806,000 total pilots, and of those, approximately 82,000 were women. That's about 10%. The percentage of female airline pilots is even less, about 5%. One reason might be that women are choosing to have their kids in their 30s and 40s. These are the years when airline pilots would be hitting their prime and making big bucks. The FAA, colleges and universities, and various aviation industry alphabet groups spend big bucks on advertising and promotion trying to encourage more women to fly. They also spend lots of money trying to encourage lots of other groups to fly. And that's fine, but my question is, do we really need more women pilots or gay pilots or black pilots? Or do we just need more good pilots? Our daughter has been around aviation since birth, yet despite unlimited opportunity and access, she has chosen a different path. She is interested in horses, and we hope to encourage her to one day have a successful career in the equestrian industry. Dana and I literally built this flight school from the ground up, and Alex has grown up at the airport and flying small airplanes with us. We've gone on numerous family trips and had a great time. And I hope she will continue to enjoy flying, but whether or not she ever chooses to become a pilot remains to be seen. I just want her to always know that that option is open and that we love her no matter what she chooses to do. So I'm here at the hangar and the cub is buried behind these two Cessna 172s. Now I have an instructor here who could help me, but I'm gonna see if I can find the tug so I can pull them out myself. So we have one of these best tugs, and this seemed to work for me pretty well. Now that I've got the two Skyhawks out of the way, I have to push the cub out of the hangar. Well, it's hot outside, and that was a lot of physical exertion to get that plane out and pre-flighted, but I did it. So now I'm gonna get some cold water, take a little break, get Alex loaded up, and then finally go have some fun. Craig Tower, Cub 656, Charlie, Charlie, you're ready at 14. Cub 656, Charlie, Charlie, Craig Tower, runway 14, clear for takeoff, right traffic, Fort Midfield. Okay, clear for takeoff 14 and confirm right traffic for 5 and report midfield 656, Charlie, Charlie. That's affirmative. Thank you. Check 392, runway 14, clear to land, hold short, runway 5, 3,600 feet available. Clear to land, runway 14, hold short, uh, runway 5, clear check 392. Cool, isn't it? We get to glide. Yes. And I like seeing all the tiny little people on the ground. Uh huh. And all the tiny little cars. Uh huh. I'll see if I can make a nice soft landing for you, Shwingding. 
We'll try a wheel landing this time. Thank you for flying with mommy. I was pretty happy with that one. Yeah. So, mommy. Cut 656 Charlie Charlie XQ on right 360. Make a right 360, 656 Charlie Charlie. Thunder Mike Hotel, runway 32, clear to land. Clear to land 32. We actually wanted to do a circle to land for runway 5, is that possible? Yep, I heard him so ask for it. And 70 Mike Hotel, Roger Port, circle to the southwest. Report circle to the southwest, 7 zero, my hotel. That's okay, I can make turns. Correct. There's Jules right, right down uh, there. Three feet seven zero. Victor holding puppy. shot on runway. Oh, five. Yay, ready for takeoff. Baby. This is three two seven zero, Victor Craig Tower, runway five. Clear for takeoff. Left Where turn north. Through. We're right over it right this second. Oh, cool. Clear for takeoff. Five. Left turn to the north. Three three seven zero, Victor. Cub six, Charlie Charlie, runway five. Clear, touch and go. Clear, touch and go, five, six, five, six, Charlie, Charlie. I'll do a slip for you. Ooh. Can you hold the water? Yeah. I know you like slips. Yeah. Okay, here it comes. You ready? Yeah. Have fun. It's so much fun slipping the cubby. You ready to make it a full stop? Uh, can we keep going? One more? Yeah. Okay. This is fun. Yay. Okay, Shui, we'll make this next one a full stop, okay? Yeah. This is fine. Yeah. I like the, the cub. Yay, honey. Thank you. Yeah. I love you. Well, that was super fun. Alex had a great time flying. I had a great time flying. Made a one not so great landing, but three other really nice landings that I'm pretty happy with. And I just really love this airplane. So that was a fun day, but it's not always so easy getting up in the air when you've got a business to run, a child to take care of, a dog to take care of, a husband to take care of, parents to take care of, just like a lot of our customers. I'm right there with you. So I'm gonna talk about that here in just a little bit. All right, so now it's Monday lunchtime and I am on my back porch with a little pup here. Say hi, Jules. She's having some tummy issues, so we're spending a lot of time outside today. And uh, so as you can see, I don't have perfect hair. I don't have perfect makeup. I don't have perfect anything. I am an opportunistic YouTuber. I am a 52-year-old mother of an 11-year-old. I run a flight school, and I am homeschool mom. And I'm taking care of a little dog. So my opportunity to fly and do content for this channel is purely when I'm not doing all of those other things. And I think that's the reason why there aren't a lot of women pilots is because there's a lot of women out there, you might be one of them, that are kind of like me, where 
we love our job, we love our family, we love our life, and we have chosen, and I wanna emphasize chosen, to arrange our life that way because we love being a mother, we love being a wife, we love doing all of the things that we do. And flying takes a lot of commitment and sometimes needs to take second place to all of those other things. Um, you know, I personally never wanted to be an airline pilot because the lifestyle didn't appeal to me. I didn't wanna have to travel on someone else's schedule. I've done a lot of traveling in my life and I've enjoyed traveling and I wanna continue traveling, but I wanna do it on my terms, not when the company tells me I gotta go take a flight or when I have the opportunity to bid for a flight. I wanna go fly when I wanna fly. So just the whole lifestyle never appealed to me. And the other thing is my priority, and this may sound cheesy to some of you, but it's the honest truth. My priority in life was to be a mother. And I didn't have an opportunity to be a mother until I was 40 years old. And uh, Dana and I were very lucky to have the planets align and we were able to um, be the parents of Alex, who you've seen in a couple of our videos. She's 11 going on 12. I'm just thrilled to be her mother and to have the opportunity to be a mother. And that was my priority. And I sure as hell wasn't gonna give up that opportunity to spend time with her to go fly a jet. It's just not something I was ever interested in. And I think, you know, people out there, women out there who are committed to motherhood as I am, can appreciate that. It's like, if you spend all this physical time and energy and mental energy producing this child, why the heck would you then just dump it at a babysitter for, you know, or a nanny for extended periods of time just so you could go fly a jet? I've been very lucky that I've had a successful career in aviation and I hope to continue having a successful career in aviation being a flight instructor. And for me, it's the ultimate working mom aviation job because I can make my own schedule, I make a decent living, and I'm able to fly really cool airplanes whenever I want. Now they're not jets, but you know what? I don't really care. To me, flying a jet at 38,000 feet on autopilot honestly seems kind of boring. I think the Cub and flying small airplanes in VFR and IFR worlds down low is a lot more challenging and interesting. Now, I've never flown a jet, so I'm sure there's things that are really fun and interesting about flying a jet. The closest thing I've ever come to flying a jet is probably a Cirrus SR-22. And you jet pilots are probably, you know, laughing at me right now, but you know, it's a complex airplane. It's got a lot of bells and whistles. It can go pretty fast. It's got a, little, got a lot of systems to manage. So, you know, I feel like that was a pretty big uh, accomplishment in my flying careers to get competent flying that. I feel like the other big accomplishment in my flying career was having the ability to own several uh, mixed models of Cub, of tailwheel airplanes and to have the opportunity to own this uh, Cub Crafter Sport Cub that you've seen in our videos. I enjoy the heck out of flying that airplane and it's always such a thrill and a challenge and that gives me joy in flying. And I don't really feel like I need to do anything beyond that. I don't feel like I need to prove anything, but that allows me to be a mom and grow in aviation and be happy as a pilot on my own terms. If we want our aviation industry to grow, if we want good pilots, if we want really competent pilots and safe skies, we should be looking for quality pilots, not necessarily female pilots or gay pilots or black pilots or Asian pilots or Russian pilots or whatever. Who cares? The airplane doesn't care who is sitting in the left seat. It's whoever is sitting there just has to be good. So I've never understood this concept of, oh, we need more women pilots. Why? Why do we need more women pilots? And honestly, there haven't been any barriers to women doing anything in almost 100 years. So the fact that there aren't as many female pilots out there tells me that women simply don't want to be pilots. And I'm okay with that. 
you know, I grew up around airplanes. My dad was a pilot when I was a girl, so I got interested in it. I didn't really have the means to afford flight training until I was much older. Once I did, I thought it would just be a hobby. It morphed into a career and it's been an awesome career, but it could have gone the other way. I could have never stepped in an airplane before and been a computer programmer right now. I probably wouldn't have met Dana, who knows? But the point is, these were conscious choices that I made. It wasn't like, you know, the government told me, oh, you can't be a pilot because you're a girl. Or my parents said, you can't be a pilot because you're a girl. Or a school teacher said that. No, nobody ever said that. Who says that these days? I mean, for crying out loud, look at what happened at the Olympics this week. All right? All I want to say is, if that kind of crap can go on, there's no way you can tell me that women or anybody else has a barrier to do anything. They just did something. I don't agree with it, but there you go. So I don't want to hear any crap about, oh, women have barriers and, you know, it's so hard for women. No, it's not. It's no harder for us to be a pilot than anybody else. I think the reason why there aren't more women pilots is because women are making other choices. That's right, choices, we have choices. Isn't that the whole point? So let me tell you what it was like when I was learning how to fly. So I was 29 years old and this was uh, three weeks before 9-11 in the Washington DC metro area. I had a stable full-time job. I was married to my first husband at the time and life was pretty okay. You know, I finally had the financial resources to do it. So I decided I'd go for it. I took a few flying lessons from the uh, flight school and then soon joined a flying club at the airport, which was a great option for me. And I was the only woman in a membership roster of about, I would say a hundred males. I think there may have been one other like wife of a member who flew with him every now and then, but I was pretty much the only girl. And it didn't bother me one bit. I never felt like weird. They never made me feel weird. There was never any sort of animosity or condescension or pressure of any kind. I've told people this before. I felt like I had 50 big brothers supporting me and helping me along, which at the time was a super awesome feeling. Um, I can only think of like one other time in the last 20 years, one time when a male pilot uh, behaved in such a way toward me just because I was a woman. And it was actually pretty pathetic and it didn't get me upset. I kind of smiled politely and then laughed at the guy and felt sorry for him. So I think it's just how you approach life and deal with people. Um, I was a member of a women's pilots group for several years and I joined only because some members of my flying club were like, hey, there could be good opportunities for you, you know, scholarships and whatnot if you want to get advanced ratings, social, so why don't you join this group? And I did, and I met some really cool people. I flew with them. A couple of them came to my baby shower. Hey, Alex. Hello. I was just telling these folks about um, me learning how to fly. So it was kind of fun, but honestly, I never felt like I needed to be friends with those girls or I needed to fly with those girls. You know, it was kind of cool, but I left the organization because I realized that, again, it was like, okay, our mission in life is to convince other people that they need to convince more women to be pilots. You know, it was almost like, um, religious people trying to recruit other people to join their religion. It's like, why? Why can't you just believe what you want to believe and leave everybody else alone? So I remained friends with some of those female pilots. They're again, really good people, but I just felt like the organization just didn't really make any sense for me. So I left and just did my own thing and have been happy as a clam ever since. 
So in short, I think the reason why there aren't more female pilots is simply because females are choosing to do other things. You know, you could flip the argument around and say, why aren't there more male fill in the blanks? And I'll give you a great example from our personal experience, people who ride horses. So you've seen in my other videos how uh, our daughter is very much attached to the equestrian lifestyle at this point. She may end up choosing that as her career. She's only 11. I think it's still too early to tell, but we're encouraging that. Every single event we go to, it's almost exclusively females. We visited the World Equestrian Center last week on a little field trip and went to some uh, show jumping events and it was almost all girls. So why aren't there more male equestrians other than jockeys? I don't know, you tell me. I guess men are just choosing to do other things. So is there a push to have, let's have more male riders. I guarantee you if there were, you know what would happen? Females would complain, you're being sexist. You don't want us riding horses. And the males could argue, no, we just simply want there to be more male riders. So we have more guys to hang out with. We feel it would be much better if there were more males riding horses. And that's exactly the argument people are making with the female pilots is, oh, the aviation industry needs us. You need to have more female pilots. No, you don't. You know what we need? We need more good pilots. We need more competent pilots. So please take that to heart. If you're a female, if you have girls, if you are a girl and you're watching this, I think it is totally awesome if you wanna learn how to fly airplanes. I think that's wonderful, but let's do us all a favor and just please stop this argument that we need more female pilots. We don't.